Hello there! I see that you want to learn about empyema. Empyema is caused by an infection. But hey! Before we tackle the empyema, did you know that our lungs have two layers? The parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. The parietal pleura is the outermost layer of the lungs that is attached to the chest wall. On the other hand, the visceral pleura covers the surface of the lungs. In between the two layers, there is what we call the pleural space, wherein it contains an average of 10 to 20 milliliters of fluid that moistens and reduces friction between the membranes where you breathe. Empyema is a condition that is defined by purulent or infected fluid collection that affects the pleural space. When a bacteria enters through the nose, down the pharynx, into the larynx, then into the trachea, and travels to the lungs, it can cause infection. Since the body is at a crisis, the brain sends signals to the white blood cells to fight off the bacteria that is causing the infection. The dead white blood cells then become pus that builds up in the pleural space in the infected tissue of the lungs. The buildup of pus is the reason that causes pressure on the lungs, resulting to dyspnea and angina pectoris, which is chest pain. So if the infection is prolonged without treatment, the pus eventually accumulates up to two cups or half a liter of infected fluid, which later on progresses into empyema. Empyema may also result from causes other than bacterial pneumonia. Any process that introduces pathogens into the pleural space can lead to an empyema, such as trauma or injury to the chest cavity, metastasis or spreading of non-pleural-based infection, introduction of bacteria at the time of thoracic surgery or chest surgery, and catheter that has an infection causing bacteria. Next is the risk factors. Risk factors is something that increases the chance of developing a certain disease. And the risk factors for empyema include recent lung conditions such as bacterial pneumonia, tuberculosis, chest surgery, lung abscess, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, bronchiectasis, and weakened immune system. In rare cases, Empyema can occur after thoracentesis, which is a procedure in which a needle is inserted through the chest wall to remove fluid in the pleural space. So basically, anything that causes infection-causing bacteria to enter the pleural cavity can increase the chances of someone to develop empyema. The signs and symptoms of empyema is closely similar to pneumonia. Sometimes, the signs and symptoms may be vaguely recognized if the patient is immunocompromised or has received antimicrobial therapy. So here are the most common signs and symptoms of empyema. First is dry cough, fever, chills, night sweats, general discomfort, uneasiness, malaise or feeling ill, and anorexia or loss of appetite. Other signs and symptoms in complex empyema include dyspnea or difficulty breathing, decreased breath sounds, unintentional weight loss, and angina pectoris or chest pain. What do you need to do if you suspect that you have empyema? Don't be scared. Just immediately go to the hospital and schedule a consultation with a pulmonologist. He's the person you can trust in these type of situations. Now, here are medical procedures that can identify if you really have empyema. First is chest x-ray. This is a non-invasive procedure, meaning it's painless and doesn't require any surgery. It uses electromagnetic waves to create pictures of the anterior chest cavity to specify if your lungs are normal or if you have empyema. Here are pictures of a normal, healthy lung versus a patient's lung that has empyema. On the left picture, we have the normal lung composing of a clear thoracic cavity without any presence of pus. On the other hand, the right picture has lungs that have accumulated pus in the pleural space of the left lung. Next is CT scan of the chest cavity. This is also a procedure that involves magnetic imaging, but it involves the transverse imaging of the chest. 
which will help to clearly identify how much pus is already accumulated in the pleural space. The picture on the left shows a picture of the thoracic cavity that encloses normal lungs, while the picture on the right shows the lungs of a patient with empyema. The gray mass of the wall on the right chest cavity shows the massive amount of pus that accumulated inside the pleural space of the patient's chest cavity. Lastly, thoracentesis. It is a minimally invasive procedure wherein a needle will be inserted through two ribs on your back. When the needle reaches the pleural space between the chest wall and lung, the pleural fluid is removed through the syringe to get a sample. Don't worry, because it only typically lasts for 15 minutes. The goal of treatment is to cure the infection and remove the collection of pus from the lung. Antibiotics are usually prescribed by physicians as a first treatment for simple cases of empyema. Because there are different strains of bacteria that can cause empyema, Finding the right antibiotic is very crucial. Antibiotic treatment typically takes 2-6 to six weeks to work, but you need to take the antibiotics continuously as the physician prescribes. Unless, the bacteria that cause the infection may develop immunity to the drug, so it's better if you listen to your doctor. Pus inside the pleural space cannot be coughed out. Therefore, it needs to be drained out with the help of thoracostomy. Thoracostomy uses a catheter than a needle. In this procedure, your doctor will insert a plastic tube in the chest in between two ribs that is near where the accumulation of pus is located. They will connect the tube to a suction device and remove the infected fluid from the pleural space. Lastly, video-assisted thoracic surgery. The surgeon will remove the affected tissue around the lung and then insert a drainage tube or use medication to remove the fluid. They will create three small incisions and use a tiny camera called thoracoscope for this process. Wow! There is so much information going on in here. If only there was a way for us to make things easier so we don't have to go through all of these procedures. And there is! Here is a list of preventive measures you can do to keep your lungs healthy and prevent having empyema. First is to become healthy and stay healthy. By eating healthy foods like fruits, vegetables, and protein, you can help boost your metabolism and boost your immune system as well. But eating healthy isn't enough. You also have to have regular exercise and drink your multivitamins. Exercise helps deliver oxygen and nutrients to your tissues and to your organs so they can work more efficiently. A healthy organ is a healthy body. Multivitamins help bridge some nutrient gaps so you can meet the recommended amount of nutrients in a day. Next is stop smoking. Smoking can cause infection because it can lower your immune system. And if your immune system is low, it means that your body will have trouble fighting off bacteria and viruses that enter your body. Not only that, but the people around you who inhale the smoke from your cigarette will also affect them. So be mindful and quit smoking. And lastly, get vaccinated. Bacterial pneumonia is one of the leading causes for acquiring empyema. So it's better to get vaccinated to make sure your body develops an immune system that is capable of fighting against bacterial pneumonia. So that's all for our lesson. I hope that you've learned a lot about empyema and always keep in mind that health is wealth. This is Ocampo Angelica from UP. HSL Medical University and 3A. Signing off. Have a good day!